Howdy everyone, it's Luxball Gaming, and today we're going to be taking a look at Shadowclaw Typhlosion in the Open Ultra League. I wanted to try Shadowclaw because if you compare 5 Shadowclaws to 2 Incinerates, they have the same energy generation. Although Incinerate I do think has the better one when it goes to like an odd number of comparison of the fast moves. So why would you want to run Shadowclaw? There are some big names in the Ultra League like Giratina and Cresselia. Polyrath's also a big name. So Shadowclaw has some pretty flexible damage into those areas as well as throughout basically the entire Ultra League meta. And it makes your Typhlosion not so clumsy just getting stuck into its move cooldowns. With this team, I was able to go, I believe, 9 wins or 10 wins out of 15 battles. And I definitely think it's pretty cool I was able to prove the Shadowclaw Typhlosion is very viable. So I definitely encourage you to get at least 1 or 2 Typhlosions, at least for Ultra League. I'd probably also get some more for Great League as well. Just because we are going to have a Cyndaquil Community Day Classic and now is the time to get Blast Burn. Some teammates I paired this up with are going to be Cress. Cress, if you run on this team, I highly recommend Grass Knot because that will take care of all of Typhlosion's weaknesses to Rock, Water, and Ground. Yes, you could run Solar Beam, but the reason Typhlosion is so strong now is its spammy Thunder Punch. A final Pokemon is the Feraligator. Who knows when we'll have our Feraligator Community Day Classic, but it can't be far if it's the Cyndaquil Community Day Classic we're having soon. I just have a non-shadow 100 IV just because I was even lucky to have a Feraligator. Like it can potentially win CMP against high rank Ampharos, which a Feraligator almost has no business in doing. Without further ado, let's take a look at Shadowclaw Typhlosion in the Open Ultra League. So right now we're hard countering our opponent with Cress into the Polyrath. Basically any charge move you use with Cress, besides Aurora Beam, is going to destroy Polyrath. Here's a situation where Grass Knot would be more handy because we kind of need to two-shot our opponent and Moonblast. A little more expensive to do that, but it's not that bad. So I definitely wanted to keep Switch Advantage and luckily opponent gives me that as well as Shield Advantage. So Cress, I do want to keep switch, so Cress is just going to have to be a sitting duck in this matchup. Opponent is finally going to elect to throw their energy, but they go for an undercharge. I'm able to get my Moonblast a little bit of a frame drop there as my opponent got two bullet seeds when I got only a cycle cut and a charge move. I know shielded a thunder which does a decent amount of damage and their final pokemon is Tapu Fini. So I really hope that thunder connecting didn't just lose me the game. So opponent commits a shield on thunder punch. Luckily Teflosion, super spammy, we're able to get to a second thunder punch. Now for alligator has to clean this up. Which probably is easy with two shields. Time to start using our shields. I shield up the first nature's madness which is going to come with a defense drop but I have to no shield the next nature's madness if they get to one on the Tapu Fini otherwise the power whip just finishes off for alligator. Opponent luckily only made it to a surf still did a decent chunk of damage. I'm throwing on bad timing again once again just trying to play around the game being bad. Fairthorn's throwing a charge move. Here's a game where I wasn't counting, so I'm just going to go for my Hydro Cannon immediately. They went for an extra Bullet Seed, so they didn't have the Charge move, but the Hydro Cannon is actually enough to take out the Ferrothorn. Next game, Typhlosion into Galissapod. So a matchup where Incinerate would overall be better just because it's more powerful, but on the bright side, Shadowclaw allows for more flexibility in terms of cooldown in this matchup, so Galissapod can't just easily time its Charge moves versus our Typhlosion. I played a charge attack priority versus the Galispod, go for a thunder punch, and opponent is actually going to commit a shield, but I'm totally fine with this. Typhlosion loves shields, so I'm hoping I could potentially farm down. Opponent sends in Skeledurge, I rebank a thunder punch, and send in my Feraligator. So they go for a Shadow Ball, which does some pretty decent damage. So I'm going to do four Shadow Claws because I don't take the next incinerate damage while maxing out my energy gains. Opponent's final Pokemon's Roserade. I think I had a Hydro Cannon there, I didn't throw it, but honestly this is still fine because we have Future Sight on Crest and we have a Blast Burn for the Rose Raid. I don't want my opponent calling a bait so I full send the Blast Burn. 
It gets shielded. Opponent sends in Galispod, and I'm just going to throw my energy immediately. So in terms of my opponent catching, this is actually what I want. Now Rose Raid, a very attack weighted Pokemon. Grass Knot does some decent damage to it. I wonder if a Leaf Storm would have made this game close. Luckily, we have Future Sight, which is going to take out Rose Raid. Here's the matchup I was looking for and hoping Shadow Claw would pop off against Giratina. So we have the super effective fast move damage now. And we have the same cooldown in this matchup. Opponent doesn't build up to an ancient power, so I'm not going to commit my shield early yet. I'm going to go for the Blast Burn. Blast Burn, a very powerful move. Obviously, we're not going to want to go for the Thunder Punch. Now, this time, I am going to commit a shield since the Typhlosion is getting pretty low. I'm able to charge attack priority to the second Blast Burn. This time, it gets shielded by my opponent. It actually wasn't charge attack priority, so I sent in my Feralgator, a very strong safe switch. I don't know if this is smart or not. I ended up going for a Hydra Cannon. I guess it's pretty smart because I get a shield. I was worried I was about to get Shadow Force. Luckily, it's just two Dragon Claws. For Alligator, not the tankiest Pokemon, but it'll still take those moves. And they had a Polyrath, so I can't believe they just didn't switch in this Polyrath. But we still do have Switch Advantage. Because when we get farmed down, our Switch Clock is basically going to be up. So it would have made sense for my opponents to switch. Now a Hydra Cannon now allows a Moonblast to knock out the Polyrath. I think it does. They charge attack priority to an Icy Wind and we are two stages attack drop. So maybe it doesn't knock out anymore. That's fine because we can honestly just get farm. We get one extra Psycho Cut with the Crest. And the final Pokemon is a Feraligator. I come in with my Typhlosion. I'm able to get to a Thunder Punch. This Thunder Punch is game winning because... I don't have Grass Knot, so this matchup will be a bit close. The lose con in this matchup is Crunch, Shield, Defense Drop, Crunch, Knocks Out, Crest. So I play around that. I call the Hydra Cannon. I guess opponent didn't even have the Crunch. And Future Sight will easily take out the opposing Feraligator. Fun fact, the Future Sight and the Grass Knot deal the same amount of damage if Grass Knot is super effective and Future Sight is neutral. Next game, we had a very good lead, Typhlosion into the Venusaur. I missed time my move here. Because my opponent switched, I could have done one more Shadow Claw. Also, talking about the lead matchup, and honestly the counter switch, Incinerate would have been way better to have here. It would have cooked the Venusaur, and the damage would have added up so much better to where like Crest would be able to knock it out with a Future Sight, or even a Moonblast. So unfortunately, Future Sight, not enough damage. Now, I do get denied, so... I am losing out on a bit of Psycho Cut damage, but maybe it's more farm for my backline. So, I'm going to regenerate energy with Typhlosion. I am going to shield this. Ampharos is also decently attack weighted. A bunch of lag going on, and luckily we were able to get the Shadow Claw down. Still more lag going on. Very iffy animations. Alright, so here's one situation where the Shadow Claw is very good. So my opponent's able to make a catch on the Venusaur, which courtesy of the terrible quality of the game going on right now, I'm going to be able to reach a Blast Burn, but you see me make a disasterly mistake. I go for the Blast Burn here all the time. That Thunder Punch cost me the game. It doesn't matter how much I was lagging in this game, the fact that I went for such a play is going to lose me this game, because... Even these Vine Whips are dealing very good damage to Feraligator. I have to go for two Hydra Cannons in case the opponent wants to shield, but Feraligator is not going to be able to be a Polyrath with a shield advantage or with a bunch of health as well. Now, I guess it's not a guaranteed win, but I can guarantee you it would make this win way much cleaner and it would make us not look as bad. Now, I did get attack drop too by the Scald, so that may have also partially mattered, but I really do not like the play I made versus the Venusaur. But I think I do want to include it in, just because even I play like a clown sometimes. Alright, another Venusaur in the lead. Once again, Incinerate would be better, but we do have Shadow Claw for the Polyrath that switches in. Of course, we don't want to stay in that matchup, although you could go for a Thunder Punch and Dip strategy, which probably is actually pretty smart now if you think about it with a Moonblast or Future Sight Crest, as you just one-shot the Polyrath afterward. Now, my opponent's trying to flip Switch Advantage, which if they do, if their Venusaur has no shields, then my backline will pop off against it. Now, what I'm doing in this matchup, I want you to pay close attention to. 
I'm going for the Moonblast because I need two charge moves to knock out. And if I keep going for Moonblast, it looks like I don't have Future Sight. So we're able to take out the Polyrath. In comes the Venusaur, and now we have the Future Sight damage. Pretty good damage, even though it's two stages attack drop, still puts it into the yellow health range. So Venusaur is going to throw a charge move. I am going to respect the Sludge Bomb. It is the Sludge Bomb, and they send in their final Pokemon, which is Skeledurge. So we are going to hard counter my opponent this game. This Blast Burn is for some chip. And now for Alligator, I don't have to shield anymore. So they go for a Shuttle Ball. Very good damage onto us. So once again, I'm going to actually go for the Farm Down. I guess my opponent just stopped tapping. What I was going to say is I would have played the for Alligator into the... Skeleturge matchup, the same thing for Shadow Claws. Next game, Typhlosion into Electivire. A matchup you don't see very often at all, but if we had Incinerate, this is the charge move we'd want in this matchup because the fast move damage would be adding up even more than the Shadow Claws right now. I was tempted to call an Ice Punch, but if I get Wild Charge, I kind of just lose the game on the spot. So I could have taken a risk, but I wanted to be safe. I also probably could have Thunder Punched. So we are able to take out the Shadow Electivire and they sent in a Tentacruel. Luckily, I do have a bunch of Thunder Punches coming into this Typhlosion. So I'm finally gonna be able to get a shield you're gonna see here. And luckily Tentacruel is in the yellow health range. Opponent perfectly over farms and I do get a catch. Hopefully this is good. Because since I'm one off, I want the Thunder Punch versus the Tentacruel. Since the back line is going to struggle, Cress needs a lot of energy to beat the Tentacruel. Now my opponent is running a pretty old Ultra League Pokemon, S Cavalier. When I used to watch Ultra League content, I definitely saw a lot of S Cavalier. So pretty cool seeing it here. I'm going for Moonblast for some potential attack drops. They went for an Acid Spray and I think a Drill Run now knocks us out. I guess if we had a high rank crest, maybe we have a chance to survive. Now I didn't throw my charge move here because I thought I lost charge attack priority to the SCAV. However, when I look back on PV Poke, they have identical attack stats. Fun fact, I also caught my Typhlosion in the wild. So it has a pretty interesting IV floor, but it still manages to be a high rank. So in theory, I probably should have tested it as the extra Shadow Claw I did basically didn't matter. But my opponent's going to be able to win this game just because they were able to sweep pretty well with the SCAV. So not an extremely clear win con in that matchup, but I definitely should have played to it. Next game, we have Typhlosion into Cresselia. So I think Incinerate honestly deals more damage in this matchup. But having Shadow Claw is also quite fine because we have the same cooldown. So I can go for charge attack priorities when I want to which is quite favorable for the Typhlosion just because it won't have to take charge moves. So two Blast Burns is going to take out the Crest with all the Shadow Claws. They send in a Feraligator and I'm going to go for a Thunder Punch. I think I'm going to switch into my Feraligator after this to try to catch a charge move and I'm able to. The reason I did this is I think my opponent's ABA weak to Typhlosion in the back and I was correct as they do have a Registeel, which the Typhlosion is really going to appreciate that matchup. So I'm just short of reaching a Hydro Cannon, but I need to win the game with Typhlosion. So in comes Typhlosion. I'm just going to go for the Blast Burn. I don't want my opponent to call a bait and win the game. I do get the shield and I'm able to get a full Shadow Claw through as well. I do have to look out in case the Feraligator comes back in, just because I think it does have some energy. So in comes that Typhlosion and I'm going to go for a Thunder Punch, bank some energy, make another catch on the opponent's Feraligator, this time with Cresselia. So I should have a straightforward win con in this matchup. I'm immediately going to go for the Moonblast here because as soon as I get rid of the Feraligator, I should win this game with the backline I have. So in comes Registeel. I'm trying to make it to any charge move I can get to. Now Registeel is going to make it to just the Focus Blast, so this just guarantees the win. I think the opponent is trying to go for a farm down play, but now it can just send in Typhlosion. This Thunder Punch guarantees the win because our team can fast move beat down even the tankiest Pokemon in Ultra League, Registeel. Okay, maybe Blissey's tankier, but you're going to use the much more meta Registeel. 
Next game, we had Typhlosion into A Slash. Opponent did an extremely smart play where they do one Shadow Claw and switch because they wouldn't take the Incinerate damage. That's if we had Incinerate. If opponent reacted fast enough, they probably could have stayed in that matchup just because the Typhlosion would have to just go for Blast Burns to deal any meaningful damage. Now, I switched very late into this matchup, responding to their Giratina Altered with my Feraligator, but luckily, I'm still going to be able to make it to an Ice Beam, and this is going to get the second shield, so Typhlosion's going to pop off. So, I'm fine with losing Switch Advantage, as the Typhlosion with a Shield Advantage is very strong. So, I'm going to overfarm. I unfortunately miscount in this matchup, but I do need to save a Shield for the Drill Runner in the back. I am able to get a full farm down. In comes a Cobalion. It's time to act like a clown again and go for the complete wrong charge move as I was completely unfamiliar with what is steel and fighting. You could say I've used Lucario a bunch, but Lucario is a fighting and steel. Not much of a difference besides the typings being in a different spot. Luckily, even though I went for a wasteful thunder punch, I can still blast burn the back line. I think this is our final game. We have Typhlosion into Annihilate. Opponent elects to immediately switch, and I come into Cress as Cress can basically pressure Swampert very easily with potentially Grass Knot. Now, I don't have Grass Knot, so I'm going to go for Moonblast as Moonblast and Psycho Cuts will add up to a two hit knockout, as well as Moonblast might get an attack drop to anchor this matchup into our favor. So Swampert, just going to go for Hydro Cannons. I don't mind losing Switch Advantage here as we're going to be strong versus the Swamper, as even Typhlosion with Shields is pretty good into the Swamper. Now, Swamper is going to finish us off. I'm going to come into Feraligator now. Swamper does two mud shots, and they're going to send in their final Pokemon, Alolan Muck. So, honestly, I really liked just kind of sacrificing my Crest into the Swamper because it got both Shields. It doesn't have to face the Alolan Muck as well. Sure, it doesn't get the favorable alignment into the Annihilate, but this entire team is good into Annihilate. So, I just no-shield my Feraligator, and it's time to win the game with Shadow Claw Typhlosion. So, I go for two Shadow Claws. I think I went for one in case I got denied. So, Blast Burn doesn't knock out the Swamper, but they get the double up right as I get this Shadow Claw through, which takes out the opponent's Swamper. So now Annihilate has to try to sweep, and we have a Blast Burn and a Thunder Punch ready to go. Blast Burn nearly finishes off the Annihilate, so if we were a Shadow version, it would one-shot it, and Thunder Punch deals the final blow. Okay, here is our last game, Typhlosion into Wolrain, so a dominant matchup. Now, the Incinerate would be much better, but I guess we do have similar cooldowns. Opponent sends in a Giratina Altered, and we're going to respond with Feraligator, just like we've been doing. Now, the one problem about this matchup is I really should go for straight Ice Beam, just like I did last time, because it was very favorable when we did, as the 2-0 shield advantage we had with the... Typhlosion just won us the game. It was actually the 1-0 shield advantage. See, look how much resources we're wasting in this matchup. I just wasted two Hydra Cannons and a shield. Opponent sends back in Wall Rain, and I go for the Hydra Cannon just to chip it, which is fine because Thunder Punch now threatens a knockout. I bank a Hydra Cannon and catch onto Typhlosion. I was so worried this was an Earthquake. Luckily, it was an Icicle Spear catch. So, time to just spam out these Thunder Punches. First gets the shield, and I'm going to have the second one, which is going to get the shield, or close to a knockout. They have an Earthquake. I decide to shield this, because I can Shadow Claw the Wall Rain down, the Giratina Altar down, and have energy for the final Pokemon. In this case, it's going to be an Ampharos. So as long as I get the combo play correctly onto the Typhlosion, no, the Feraligator, as long as I land a charge move with the Crest, I should win this game. So... Ampharos, kind of in a struggling matchup here, as since it's a non-shadow, two Brutal Swings aren't going to knock it out. They need a bunch of energy here, so I go for the Moonblast, now it's in Hydro Cannon range, I snipe with the Hydro Cannon for Alligator, which takes out Ampharos, and I'm going to be able to just Shadow Claw the rest of this team down. So, if you want to try a Shadow Claw Typhlosion, I can easily say it is definitely viable. Ember, I cannot say that at all. That's going to be it for today's video on Luxball Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.